How can we use ratios to solve problems? There are a few ways actually, but I'll be focusing on a couple in this video. This is part one of five of our ratio problem solving videos. We can use ratios to see the relationship between things. With the relationship known, we can find the amount of something easily. Let's say there are four girls in a class. The ratio of girls to boys is one to five. How many boys are in the class? We can find the number of boys in the class by using what we know about equivalent ratios. Let's first lay out our information like we've been doing. Due to the order the question was presented, the ratio tells us that for every one girl, there are five boys in the class. This means that there are five times the number of boys than girls. There are four girls, which therefore means there are five lots of four boys. Five times by four equals to 20. There are 20 boys in the class. Another way of thinking about it is as follows. We are told there are four girls in the class. Therefore, one part of the ratio represents four students. If each part represents four students, and we know there are five parts representing the number of boys, there must be five lots of four boys. This must mean there are 20 boys in the class. This is what we call a unit ratio, where we use the value of one part of the ratio to calculate other values. For the people that have been following the series, you would probably see some similarities to our proportion video about unitary method, and you'd be absolutely correct. They work in the exact same way to unit ratios, but presented in a slightly different way. Quick side note, let's compare the ratio and the number of boys and girls. What happens when we simplify the boys and the girls? The number of boys and girls simplify to the ratio presented in the question. This shows that the ratio and the number of students are equivalent to each other. The relationship is still the same. They are equivalent ratios. Here's another unit ratio example. Chima owns some shoes. The ratio of smart shoes to trainers is one to six. Chima owns 18 trainers. How many smart shoes does he own? Once again, we lay out the information based on the question like so. For every pair of smart shoes, he has six pairs of trainers, which means the number of trainers he owns is six times larger than the number of smart shoes he owns. Therefore, to calculate the number of smart shoes he owns, divide 18 by six. The number of smart shoes he owns is three. Alternatively, we could calculate the number of smart shoes by recognizing that 18 shoes fit exactly into six parts. So to find out the number of shoes that represent one part, we can divide 18 by the number of parts. Each part represents three shoes, and since smart shoes represent one part, Chima must have three smart shoes. Another example. Some nursery school toddlers went on a trip to the park. The number of girl toddlers was 16. The ratio of the number of boy toddlers to the number of girl toddlers was three to two. Work out the total number of toddlers at the park. We know that we have three parts and two parts in the ratio, making five parts in total. The total number of toddlers can be represented with five parts, but we don't know how many toddlers this actually is. The ratio isn't a unit ratio like the previous questions. So once again, the key is to use the information we do have to find out what one part represents. Two parts is worth 16. And from this, we can divide the 16 by two to find that one part is worth eight toddlers, as each part must be equal. In our ratio, we had the boy toddlers representing three parts. This means we take our one part and multiply it by three. So eight times by three equals to 24 boy toddlers. This means that in total, there are 24 plus 16 toddlers, which equals to 40 toddlers at the park. Here at ONU, We've come up with a few techniques that can help get to answers quickly visually. One of them can help with the above question. We call it DUMA, which stands for divide up, multiply across. This technique we'll be using throughout the entire series. It's a helpful tool to find a missing value in ratio-based problems. The ratio in the question is three to two, and we know there are 16 girls, and we want to find the number of boys to then find the total number of toddlers. We lay out our ratio like so. We divide up, starting from the bottom, then multiply across. 
That means we start with 16 divided by 2, then multiply by 3, which gives us 24. This will always work regardless of the ratio. A quick example. Ratio of toy cars to dolls in the bag is 8 to 3. There are 40 cars in the bag. How many toys in total? We lay out our ratios, divide up, multiply across. All that is left to do is add the two values together. Another quick example. Ratio of red to green to blue is 5 to 4 to 7. There are 20 greens. Find out how much red and blue. Laying out my information, I divide up, multiply across, divide up, and multiply across again. And this will be our final answer. Okay, last example. Ramesh has some pens and pencils. The ratio of pencils to pens is four to seven. He owns 12 pencils. How many pens does he own? How many pens and pencils does he own altogether? We lay out the ratio like before. He has four pencils for every seven pens. 12 pencils represent four parts, so to find how much one part represents, we divide up, multiply across. Divide 12 by 4, which gives us 3, then multiply the answer by 7. Ramesh owns 21 pens. Now we know there are 12 pencils and 21 pens. The total number is 33. So to summarize, when using ratios to solve problems, using what you know about one part of the ratio can help identify an answer. This can be represented as a unit ratio. Multiply or divide the value in the ratio to get the amount you're looking for. If not a unit ratio, find how much one part represents, then multiply that amount by how many parts the item you're trying to find out represents. And lastly, feel free to use Duma where necessary. Pause and try these questions yourself. If you like this series, be sure to comment, like and subscribe to be kept updated on new in-depth videos. And most importantly, share. I mean, what's the point of knowledge if you can't share it, right? And if we can make some people not give up on maths because of these videos, then our job is done. Don't see a topic you need help with? Suggest topics in the comments section. We read all the comments. Thanks again for watching and for learning. Peace.